This is the NBC University Theater, bringing you a full-hour dramatization of The Red Badge of Courage by Stephen Crane, starring John Agar as Henry Fleming. This is a war story, written by a boy who had never heard a shot fired in anger. It is a classic of American literature, psychologically sound, repertorially accurate, and poetically quite perfect. The Red Badge of Courage, the short masterpiece of Stephen Crane, whose personal legend is as exciting as his literary accomplishment. Crane was the son of a minister in Newark, New Jersey, which background he departed early to become reporter, novelist, poet, war correspondent, world traveler, and intimate friend of Joseph Conrad. He died before he was 30 in the mountains of the Black Forest of Germany. We bring you today a new and exciting radio adaptation of The Red Badge of Courage, written by Brainerd Duffield and Emerson Crocker, and starring in the role of Henry Fleming and voicing the introspective thoughts of that young soldier, Mr. John Agar. The cold passed from the earth, and the retiring fogs revealed an army stretched out on the hills, resting. A river lay at the army's feet. And across it, one could see the red, eye-like gleam of hostile campfires. As the landscape changed from brown to green, the army awakened and began to tremble with eagerness at the noise of rumors, rumors of war and battle soon to come. Gosh, it's cold. You're lying on your bunk, Henry Fleming, watching, listening, waiting for the word that's bound to come. You've been marched and drilled and reviewed. Surely there will be a battle soon. Look, here comes a soldier with news in his eyes. Boys, boys, I just heard something. I heard some fellers talking. We're going to move tomorrow, sure. We're going way up the river, cut across, and come around in behind them. It's a lie, Jim Conklin. I don't believe the derned old army's ever going to move. I got ready to move eight times in the last two weeks, and we ain't moved yet. Is it true, Jim? Are we going to move? Oh, Henry, yes. What I just told you. Oh, what you talking about? You don't know everything in the world, do you? I didn't say I knew everything in the world. Going to be a battle, sure, is there, Jim? Of course there is. Of course there is. Now, you just wait until tomorrow, Henry, and you'll see one of the biggest battles ever was. Now, you just wait. So we're going to fight at last. <laughs> So at last, you're going to fight, Henry Fleming. Tomorrow, there will be a battle, and you'll be in it. All your life, you've dreamed of battles. You've seen yourself in visions, performing deeds of glory. You've read of marches and campaigns, and longed to be a part of it. All your life. Remember that day back home. Ma, I want to enlist. We've been all over that, son. I need you on the farm. Here, chick, 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 chick. Oh, but, Ma, everyone's going. They're all going. Men are, yes. You're just a boy. Time enough for men's foolishness later on. Oh, but, Ma, I, I want to go. Here, chick, 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 chick. Now, Henry, don't you be a fool. But every day you read the papers and heard the gossip of the village. And every day the winds carried you the clangoring of the church bells, telling the news of some great victory. They were ringing that day when you came home. Your mother had been milking the brindle cow, remember? You waited in the kitchen till you heard her step. You'd planned a little speech... And then the chance didn't come to use it after all. Ma, I've enlisted. <sighs> Lord's will be done, Henry. It seemed like, like I had to do it. 
I'll go and pack your bundle for you, son. And later in the dooryard, it was time to say goodbye. It wasn't quite the way you'd pictured it would be. She didn't seem to understand what a glorious thing it was to be a soldier and march away to war. Now you watch out, Henry, and take good care of yourself. Don't go a-thinking that you can lick the whole rebel army, because you can't. You're just one little feller amongst a whole lot of others. I, I know that, Ma. Now I've knit you eight pairs of socks, and I've put in all your best shirts because I want my boy to be just as warm and comfortable as anybody in the army. Whenever you get holes in them, I want you to send them right away back to me so I can darn them. Yes, Ma, I will. And uh, I don't want you to ever do anything, Henry, that, that you'd be ashamed to let me know. Just think as if I was uh, watching you. If you keep that in your mind always, I guess you'll come out about right. Ma, uh, I guess I, I better get going. I I don't know what else to, to say to you, child, excepting that you must never do no shirking on my account. If so be a time comes when when you have to be killed or do a mean thing, why, well, Henry, don't think of anything excepting what's right, because there's many a woman has to bear up against such things these days. The Lord will take care of us all. All right, Ma. Goodbye. Uh, I put a cup of blackberry jam with your bundle, son, because I know you like it, above all things. Goodbye, Henry. Watch out. Be a good boy. When you look back, you notice she was crying. Her face was stained with tears, and it, it made you feel ashamed. And now, here you are. The time has come at last. And there will be a battle. And now you know. You're afraid. Afraid that when the battle comes, you'll want to run away. Well, you fellers can believe me or not, just as you like. Didn't the cavalry all start this morning? The regiment's got orders, too. A feller what was down to headquarters told me a little while ago. The raisin blazes all over camp. Anybody can see that. Huh. Shucks. Jim. Huh? What do you want, Henry? How, how do you think the regiment will do? You, you think any of the boys will up and run? Think they'll run away? Oh, maybe a few of them run, especially when they first goes under fire. Of course, it might happen that the whole kitten caboodle might start and run if some big fighting come first off. And again, they might stay, fight like fury. You, you think they will? Well, they call the regiment green horns and fresh fish and everything, but the boys come a good stock. Most of them will fight like sin after they once get shooting. Did, did, did you ever think that you might run yourself, Jim? <laughs> mm -hmm. I've thought it might get too hot for Jim Conklin, some of them scrimmages, but if everybody was a standing and fighting, well, well, I'd stand and fight. But Jiminy, I would. I'll bet on it. Would you, Jim? But you, Henry Fleming, you're not so sure. You lie on your bunk wondering about it. A panic fear grows in your mind. In the blood and blaze of danger, those legs of yours could run away and disgrace you everlastingly. You reproach and despise yourself because you're so afraid. You don't feel like a hero anymore. What's the matter with me? What's the matter with me? gloom before the break of day, the uniforms glowed deep purple. From off in the darkness came a trampling of feet, and a moment later the regiment went swinging off into the black. The air was heavy and cold with dew. The wet grass marched upon rustled like silk. The men stumbled along, muttering, wondering, cursing, until at last the sun struck full upon the earth 
Two thin black columns were climbing the brow of the hill like two serpents crawling from the cavern of the night. Hey, fellas, what regiment is that? Why, that's the Greenhorn. Ain't you heard? That's the new regiment. Hi! Fresh fish! Fresh fish machine! <laughs> They marched all day, and at nightfall, the columns broke into regimental pieces. Tents sprang up like strange plants. Campfires like red, peculiar blossoms dotted the night. The lighted moon hung in a treetop. You have wandered a little distance from the others to be alone, to lie down in the grass. The liquid stillness of the night, the soft wind, the whole mood is in sympathy with you. The night takes pity on you, Henry. For the first time, you long to be home again. Perhaps your mother was right after all. You are different from the others. You're just a boy. No wonder you're afraid. You weren't cut out to be a soldier. Hello, Henry. Uh, is hello, that you? Wilson. What are you doing out here? Oh, just just thinking. Oh, you're looking thundering peaked, boy. What's ailing you? Oh, oh, nothing. Well, nothing to be getting blue about. We got him now. They've been licking our side up to now, but this time, this time we'll lick them good. Gee, Rod, we're really going to thump them this time. How, how do you know you won't run when the time comes? Me run? <laughs> it ain't likely. Shucks. You ain't the bravest man in the world, are you? No, I ain't. Didn't say I was. Said I'm going to do my share, that's what I said. Who are you, anyhow? You talk like you was Napoleon Bonaparte. Heck, I'm going back to camp. Don't know what's come over you, Henry Fleming. Think you're so all-fired smart. Go on back there, then. I don't care. You didn't mean to make him mad. What's the matter? How brave are you? What are you watching for there in the darkness? What are you listening for? Why should you be trembling? Here in the thick darkness you lie, listening, shivering. Sick with fear. Oh, I'm scared. Oh, gosh, I, I'm scared. In the gray dawn, the men were shaken to their feet. Still half asleep, they found themselves hustling, running, panting through the woods. <laughs> what the hell is such a, such a hurry for? Henry, where are you? Here. I'm right with you, Wilson. You just stick close to me. And Jim, there's nothing to be scared of. Listen. Oh, what's that? Hey, it's muskets. Oh, it's muskets, all right. Man, did you hear them muskets? We're getting near. We're getting nearer to them. Why do we have to run so fast? I gotta get my breath. Up there in the shadows, the fierce-eyed enemy is lurking. You're gonna be sacrificed. It's all a trap. Can't they see you? Are you the only one with eyes? Stop them. Tell them before it's too late. You there. Move along. Can't you see? We'll all be killed like pigs. Boys, listen to me. Let me get up in the ranks there. Yes, sir, but... Get back there. Move, I say. Yes, sir. I am. Don't mind him. He doesn't understand. No one knows but you. You didn't want to fight. And now they want to see you slaughtered. Hear that? Artillery. All right, you men. Just follow me. What are y'all jumping for? That battle's most five miles away. We got to walk before we get there. Come on, this way. Let's go. The regiment slid down a bank and wallowed through a stream. They floundered up the other side and into a clump of woods. The men dug in, and they were moved, and they dug in again and again. They marched about from place to place. But when they halted for their noonday meal, the guns seemed far away. There they rested, while the men of the new regiment watched and listened eagerly to the tongues of the veteran brigades, mouthing the gossip of the army, rumors that had flown like birds out of the blue. I met one of the 148th Maine boys, and he's seen a big battle over on the Turnpike Road. Killed about 5,000. 